Hello, and welcome to Benchmark Pricing and Settlements. In this lecture, we're going to go over benchmarks and why they're important to the oil industry, pricing agencies that formulate these benchmark prices, the settlement methodologies they use, and their pursuit for evolving price transparency. So, why do we need benchmarks? Well, benchmarks are crucial in the industry, given the sheer volume and diversity of the world's oil industry. Benchmarks provide a representative price for world's crude and oil products. Therefore, producers, users and oil traders can use them to reference their physical deals and ultimately determine a trade price. What typically happens is a physical trader will agree a price with another physical trader and they will agree on a price as a differential to a benchmark. They will aim to use the benchmark that most accurately reflects the oil in question. This is determined by location, quality and specification and will then determine by way of simple market dynamics where the differential should be in reference to this benchmark. There are many different benchmarks across the globe, which account for the many different variances in location and specification. The benchmark strength is determined predominantly by its liquidity. As you can imagine, for a benchmark to be deemed effective, it's not good enough to have just the price. We need to be able to trade considerable volume, or at least volume that matches the physical deal at that or close to that price. Liquidity is another way of saying that a high amount of volume or trades can be executed at or close to the bid offer spread, with liquid markets also maintaining a tight bid offer. This is of importance, but you also need to be trading a benchmark which can accurately reflect a representative price for the oil and grade type in question. For example, there's no use a Middle Eastern trader pricing their oil off WTI unless the oil in question is very close to specification or region or any other reason why it's applicable in that circumstance. Historically, Brent futures and WTI futures were used as benchmarks solely because they were just the most liquid. But as the markets evolve and the derivative market has expanded and increased liquidity across many different products, there is more demand for bespoke benchmarks. Finally, the resilience of a benchmark to distortion and manipulation is absolutely critical because ultimately you want to have trust and dependence on the benchmark that it will track as closely as possible to the physical you are actually exposed to. As you don't want to be left with a hedge that does not accurately reflect your risk, this is both a waste of time but can also bring about greater exposure which is unnecessary. Platts, Argus and Opus are the main pricing agencies that the industry uses. The most predominant pricing agency is Platts. Platts prefer a window-based methodology where their philosophy is that it's better to have liquidity than an average price as this is more likely to be representative of where true market value is. So what Platts will do is they will assign a time windows throughout the day that are consistent unless holidays or another reason create the need to change it. But this will generally be 4 to 4.30 in Singapore time and again at 4 to 4.30 London time. In these times, the agency has slight variances, but generally speaking uses deferred loading crude and deferred trading derivatives, of which 10 to 30 day loading or some variation of that tends to be the time span they use. This is a wide enough range for there to be a lack of distortion from supply and demand fluctuations and gives a wide enough spectrum such that extreme high or low prices are genuine supply and demand issues rather than short term. The integrity of Platts is enhanced by the liquidity that's improved over the years, but also the general trust in it. It's been used to price crude oil particularly in the last 10 years and accounts for about 60% of the reference pricing. Platts also provides a journalistic content on market moves and they try to give their take on why things are moving the way they are. Given they have assessments for such a wide range of products, it is worth reading as a way to gauge what's going on in the market. We also have Argus and they are a direct competitor of Platts. However, they have a different philosophy in that they believe an average of the day trades or at least using markets assessed throughout the day is more reflective on the market rather than a concentrated window. They use a range of prices, in some cases a volume weighted average, and they also survey market participants and review electronic trading and then determine the price using a range of these on a daily basis. Argus Media is the journalistic arm and again, like Platts, they report on flows of physical or market related news to have their say on why they believe things are moving the way they are. So moving on to assessment methodologies, one of the most important to know is Brent Futures. It is the second most liquid following the WTI futures contract. Given its liquidity, and used to price a lot of the swaps that are traded and ultimately the physical that's referenced, it's important to know how and when they are settled. Minute markers are one of the considerations in the methodologies. They provide a price at a specified time throughout the day by taking a weighted average of futures in a specified minute. They can release this whatever they deem necessary, but it is at least on a daily basis. 
Generally, this will be from 4.29 to 4.30 Singapore time, and again from 4.29 to 4.30 London time. On the Brent expiry day, when the futures expire for the month, the minute markers are at five intervals throughout the day in order to accommodate their methodology for the ultimate settled price for Brent futures. There's also the trader settlement, or TAS. This is the weighted average of futures in the final two minutes of the ICE exchange trading day, which is 7.28 to 7.30 London time. The exchange is still open until 11 p.m., but the pricing through the pricing agencies and the trade at settlement prices are all done by 7.30 p.m. every day. Finally, we have the Brent Index, which is used to price the final futures price for a given month. This will occur at the end of the month. For instance, October futures will price on the 31st of August, as the futures trade two months ahead. On this day, the Brent Index reflects the actual physical price of North Sea crude oil, because ultimately Brent futures are a benchmark using North Sea oil. As you can see at the bottom of the slide, physical BFOET, which references Brent 40's Oseberg Equifus control, these are the streams that make up the Brent index. They take the average prices of the traded physical plus the minute markers of the futures at five intervals throughout the day and use this to determine a weighted average price. This will then be the final price for the Brent futures. Moving on, we have WTI futures, which is the world's most liquid futures contract. The main difference between Brent and WTI is that WTI is physically delivered. The expiry price is therefore just a physical price of which people are ultimately happy to buy or sell. That said, there is still trade at settlement on a daily basis similar to Brent, and it is assessed by the weighted average of the futures trades in the two minutes at the end of every trading day. WTI also has the WTI calendar month average, which is actually a price for the time futures. Specifically, this is the weighted average of WTI future time spreads, i.e. weighted average of month one versus month two, plus weighted average of month two versus month three, and then the weighted average of the two combined. This price is used as a reference for physical traders and is commonly used in the US market in particular. Aside from the two key futures, we have benchmark swaps, or as they're now called, first line futures. The idea behind these are to provide an increased level of specificity for physical oil prices. So this table gives a brief summary. For crude in Europe, we have the Brent futures, which is the North Sea oil. But Platt's data Brent, more accurately and transparently, tracks the actual physical North Sea oil prices on a day-to-day -day basis rather than once a month. Therefore, the dated market can more accurately track the physical price. This is the same for Dubai, LLS and Mars. Going through the table, you can see that predominantly Platts-based methodologies are used by the industry. But in the case of US futures, which are physically delivered, such as heating oil and RBOB, these are simply referenced by the futures themselves, and there is no underlying SOPS market that is regularly traded to benchmark the underlying physical. Finally, we have the evolving price transparency of benchmarks. Pricing agencies are always looking to increase the robustness of their benchmark. One key way they do this is to increase the number of markets available or number of markets they assess, which can be difficult for them to achieve because ultimately they have to track a lot more deals and it's a lot more work. But it does mean that the benchmark is a lot less susceptible to sudden fluctuations or small fluctuations in supply and demand, or it being just the case that one particular oil field is disrupted as one particular field shouldn't dictate the price for the whole world's oil. A classic example is how we first started out in the oil industry, which was Brent Futures, and this was just priced off the Brent oil field. The Brent oil field is ultimately not that big, and a number of participants could trade Brent and move the physical market around to suit their positions on the derivative contracts. They have since added four more fields to the assessment, which account for more crude per day, and therefore it's a lot harder to move around. As a result, we have a better representation of supply and demand on a global scale. Every benchmark is closely watched by regulators across the globe, but the ones to be aware of are the FCA in the UK and the CFTC. In the US, the CFTC in particular is quite aggressive in pursuing discrepancies in the benchmark. That's not to say the FCA aren't, especially after the libel scandal and the financial crisis, and investigations and fines have been common over the years. One of note that was quite recent was Arcadia Oil Trading Firm, which was fined $30 million by the CFTC for their role of pushing down WTI futures. Also, BP and Shell offices were raided in 2013 when a whistleblower suggested and allegedly had evidence that the traders were colluding in order to push the dated Brent market up and down. So that concludes the lesson on benchmark pricing and settlements. The key takeaways here are that benchmarks provide a reference for oil to exchange hands around the world. Hedging is executed on benchmarks which best represent the oil being traded. 
And finally, benchmark integrity depends on liquidity and breadth of methodology, and benchmark activity is closely monitored by regulatory bodies. Thank you for listening.